You're watching News 24, I'm Erin Bates. It's the Friday after a Wednesday that really sent ripples through South Africa, a juggernaut week of politics and news, uh, withdrawn charges from President Jacob Zuma's lawyer to block a report from the Public Protector's Office on allegations of state capture, and then a massive collection of South African members of the public really going onto the streets of Pretoria, Johannesburg and Cape Town to protest over state capture. Lawson Naidu, you were involved with Save South Africa, one of the events that was held on Wednesday. Uh, were you surprised at all by the turnout that you, you had on Wednesday? Um, well, no, we, d we had done a lot of work in consulting with different role players and stakeholders across civil society from business, the faith groups, labor, uh, civil society organizations and political parties. And I think what we achieved on Wednesday was to get a very, very broad representation of that spectrum of South African society present in one place talking about one issue. Uh, it, was, it ended up coincidentally that we were holding what, was what we called as People's Assembly Against State Capture. And coincidentally, the report of the public protector on state capture was re ultimately released the same day. So it was very much focused on that. And part of the impetus for this was the charges that were brought against Minister of Finance, Pravin Gordon, and the others. Uh, and the fact that those charges were dropped was a, was a victory, we felt, for public pressure and indignation, mm -hmm. in effect, at, at those charges being brought in the first place, because there was no, no basis in fact or in law for those charges to be brought. So that was a victory. Um, and a second victory occurred on the day when the Public Protector's Report was released. So it was really a remarkable day for South Africa, I think, and to see that broad spectrum of r role players uh, speaking to the issue of state capture and saying that we will stand together. And I think we haven't seen that sort of array of people come together under one uh, uh, umbrella since the 1980s in South Africa. You're sounding quite optimistic and buoyed up, but I must say I noticed the morning of, of Wednesday some criticism of uh, business executives in South Africa, predominantly male, predominantly white, predominantly older, and, uh, and then the logo for Save South Africa, which is of course a woman with a duck, a black woman. Uh, what, what's your response? I mean, do you feel some guilt? Uh, what happened? N none whatsoever. I mean, I think the, the, the symbol that we've used for Save South Africa of a woman in a duck is, is, to, rep is to, to, to represent all South Africans through that image. Uh, I think there's been a lot of um, confusion about what happened on Wednesday. There was a press conference early on Wednesday morning at which a range of uh, uh, stakeholders spoke. It was attended by a number of uh, chief executives of JSE listed companies. That's absolutely correct, but that was a press conference. Uh, that we hosted uh, prior to the event and business had, had requested the opportunity to address the media on, on why they were involved in the Save South Africa campaign. So uh, amongst the business leaders that spoke on, uh, at that press conference was in fact Cheryl Corollas mm. uh, and uh, Anele from um, TAC also spoke as did Sipo Pichana. So yes, business in South Africa is still largely white and male and that has to change and there is a recognition that we will do so. And just as Zaki Yakub, when he addressed the uh, People's Assembly a little bit later that morning, said to business there, yes, we welcome your participation in this, but don't think that we're not going to challenge you on fair labor practices. So it's a, oh, a wake-up call to business as well that, yes, we welcome you to join our, our, the struggle, but we're also uh, uh, going to look at you critically and, and, not, and, and not ignore uh, what is happening within that uh, environment.